Petras. In trouble. Petras goes down. Aiden Hutchinson. He'll roll up on you folks and let you smell his cologne. I tell you what. We gonna talk real facts. Hey, know you can kill that. We the ones bringing the skill back. Know you can feel that. Know you've been waiting on someone to bring you the real back. Party time, party time. Excellent. Turn it up. We turn to up. Never late. Don't mistake us for no other bush. Hey, what's the deal, Breeze? Yes, Let's sir. go. We Let's in go. that thing, boy. Let's go, nigga. We in I that gotta thing, start off. Boy. I'm going to start off by saying welcome to episode eight of First of the Party. You know who it is, your two coasts, your man Breeze and Al Fudd. We want to collectively come together and say one thing. Fuck Ohio State. That's how we getting down. Yeah. Bro. That's how we started, man. Yeah. Fuck Ohio State. Go blue. Fuck you know what I'm saying? This is what we've been yeah. waiting on, bro. This is what hey, we've been waiting on, cuz. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, it's been a long time, bro. It's yeah. been a long time, man. We have yeah. to go. We yeah, in there, boy. I'm turned up, hey, man. The Big Ten champs. That's a good time, a good on, time man. man. Hey, this we is for all the suckers. Three? Hey, this for this for all the suckers that live in Michigan. That's yeah. Ohio State fans. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. This this part this particular section of our podcast is dedicated to you, lames. Yeah. The ones who live in Michigan, yeah. born in Michigan, but you ain't never been to Ohio. Ain't yeah. never been to Ohio. Ain't never even been to Ohio. Yeah, this is dedicated man. to you, Lames. Go blue. And we mean that from the bottom of our heart. Yes, sir. Woo! Yes, sir. From my ball. Hey, so- fuck Ohio State. How you feeling about that Big Ten championship game, man? How you it feeling about great, that win, man. man? It was great. And that, and that win was underrated. I'm going to say that. Um, it ain't no bias to it. It was very underrated. Iowa is a, a, a powerhouse on the defensive side. Very trash on offense. I mean, bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Hey, but on defense, though, bro, they had – right now, I think they got about uh, – they got 24 takeaways, bro. 22 of them the interceptions. They lead the nation, Come on, man. man. Kirk Ferentz got the boys ball hawking. Kirk Frank, man, hey, 17 years in the game is much respect to Iowa, bro. But 42 to 3, whoop that ass. <laughs> hey, when Blake Corum – when Corum took that first one, I said, hey, he bounced hey, it to yeah. the outside. Dog. Hey. <laughs> hey, man. And everybody that's worried about – uh. Georgia, you know, I see a lot of people saying the same things that they were saying about us in Ohio State, you know, a lot of doubt, you know, I'm gonna tell you something too, Michigan got a defense too, we play on that side of the ball too, you know what I'm saying, and from what I seen with that Georgia and Alabama game, Georgia need to do something with their offense too, you know, and our offense looked way more creative in our uh, conference championship game than Georgia's did, and let it try. throw it out to Edwards, Edwards fires, he's got a wide Unless Georgia was they 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 try, they try to say they was holding something back. You feel me? I don't believe that shit. You don't y'all, do that in championship games. Hey, you don't do that in championship games. Y'all had a chance to eliminate Bama and stay the number one ranked in the nation. Y'all blew that. Yeah. Boy, stop. They blew that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. hey. Hey, well, like what I would like to say is, and 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 this might come off as cocky or whatever, but you can game plan against schemes. You can game plan against uh styles but what you can't game plan against is somebody just pounding you into submission and that's what jim doing this year we just running the ball on you we got them big uglies in there we go wear you out for four quarters and haskins corn them boys is going uh even the freshmen they pounding them they yeah. pounding them baby yeah. hey hey Donovan Edwards, man michigan future looking bright but yes. Donovan Edwards, he gonna be a premier back blake corn coming back next year Okay, we got the five-star J.J. McCarthy out there. He doing good. Made Ronnie Bell. Mistakes. Come on now, Ronnie Bell coming back next year. Super yeah. senior. Come on, Andrew Anthony coming back. Bro, yeah. we got a squad coming back. Keep man. going. We got a squad let's coming go. back, bro. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and let's talk about let's talk about 97. Hashtag Hutch for Heisman in the, in the comments. Come on, I, LA. Hey, I'm going Hashtag to Hutch. Hutch for Heisman. Dog. We going to Hutch's. Come on, man. Hutch needs hey. some bucks. <laughs> Come Speaking on. of Hutch, man, he in the fin- he in the uh, Heisman finalist, man. Yeah, uh, yeah we yeah, all know should. they probably gonna give it to Bryce, but uh, it's good to have uh, a Michigan guy up there 
uh, most definitely representing going up there for the Heisman. And it's also good for uh I don't know, man. What do you think, man? Say Michigan. He up there, man. He's up there in the draft force, man. You know, Uh-oh. we got oh Oh, I mean, oh. the Lions got number one, man. What, what oh, would it do? Oh. What would it? Well, I mean, hometown guy, Michigan man. His Come dad went to Michigan, broke his dad's Come records. Come uh, on, man. Don't let us get a national championship. Don't let us get don't the let natty. Us. Don't let us. Sheila. I'm going go to go. got to draft him first, Sheila. Draft from number one. You was already looking at Thibodeau out there in Oregon. I love Thibodeau. Very talented guy. And, where, and depending on where he land. He is bound to be a, a, a Pro Bowl guy, bound to be. Mm-hmm. But listen, when you talk about intangibles, because mm-hmm. it ain't about in the NFL, it ain't about just rushing the quarterback. You got to be able to stop the run and set that edge. Yes, He's sir. shown in the Big Ten and in the wintertime, not out west where it's all pretty at, in the Pac-12, in the Big Ten where grown Stay man play. Come on now. Aiden Hudson know how to stop that run. You see what he you did to Ohio saying? State? Three sacks on, against now. Ohio State Come in on, the now. big game. Championship on, game, he got him one too. Shout out to that man, David Ajabo, on the other side, number fifty-five. Yes, hey, sir. hey, he reminds me of uh, Adafi Owe that we drafted at, uh, in Baltimore last year. He's okay. untapped talent, bro. He okay. hasn't even played. He hasn't been playing for a long time. And look at what he's accomplished. When that boy gets some real time, he was scouting. Scout when that boy gets some real time, bro, David Ajabo gonna be a problem, man. He gonna he. I think he might have a higher ceiling than Aiden. Don't get mad at me. I'm just Ooh. telling you what I seen. Hey man, the boy nice. Hey, that come on, Lions. over there, nice man. I love what they're doing over there. Hardball, no boys balling. Sheila Ford, man, right here. Come on, number one pick. You got to go with Aiden Hutchinson. He gonna bring you the pass rusher that you need. He gonna make uh the secondary better. Um, uh, I love. I'm excited. You know, I'm Mr. Optimistic. I'm the Kool Aid man. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited about Okuda coming back next year. I'm excited about Melifon getting his feet wet now. We see what the boy Amani Awarie doing on others as five picks this year. Almost Come had on another now. one against uh, Justin Come Jefferson on this week. Come hey, on now. Hey, Derek. Hey, Derek Barnes, the linebacker, showing up now. He getting his playing time. Hey, we need to go ahead and get Aiden Hutchinson first. Um, Shout out to the Lions. We did it for Oxford this weekend. Um, hey, shout out to shout out to Oxford High School. Definitely, definitely want to represent them, man. What they went through was tragic. Families and everybody affected yeah, in that man. situation. Don't for, don't for everybody, not just the four families with the casualties, but everybody that has something to do with it. If you was at school, if you go to that high school, hey, man, we we definitely praying for y'all and y'all family for sure. But our boys held it down on the NFL and on the college level for y'all, man. Yes, That's it was big, a hell of a weekend. Much respect. Great weekend. Great weekend. Great weekend. Oh, uh, man. Uh, <laughs> the hey, rookie. first win. The first win. We had to get one. The first win, bro. They talking about Lions going to go. Oh, man, no, nah, man. Them boys got them a dub, man. Them hey, boys got them a dub, dog. For all the haters, look, look. It's easy. Like, it, it, it blows my mind, man. All the people that's, oh, they just happy they got one win. Look, let us be happy, man. Let, Let us happy, Lions, hey, if you don't like the Lions, just get the hell on, man. Go root for another team, man. Don't bask in, hey, don't don't throw no dirt on our shine, man. But real, um, man. Don't rain in make that rain, game, dog. man, we seen uh, the first half Jared Goff was dealing. You know what I'm saying? Dealing. And like I've been saying all year, man, I just want the Lions to lose well. <laughs> lose good. Close games. Right. Don't get blew That's out. That's right. Um, everybody jumping on Jared Goff. I know he's a Super Bowl uh quarterback i haven't seen him you know what i'm saying I, we know that the, the talent here has been uh either injured or we haven't had any at all uh, i'm excited about the future cephas josh reynolds I'm, I'm excited to see both of them on the field at the same time oh Alone. well we gotta talk of you can't st brown game winning rookie. touchdown rookie. rookie okay young six hey, let me tell you six. something let me tell you something i i, I we've got to make sure we be very clear i understand that the lions is one and what is that one in ten one in ten yes is that okay? I understand that, but what I have about what have I kept kept telling you in our phone conversation? The Lions coaching staff makes me feel like everything gonna be okay. You yeah. run your name when you look at that coaching staff, bro. They got people who know the game. They know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. It's it's about changing the culture. For example, let's compare the two organizations. It took Jim Harbaugh six years, including myself. I was like, fire this guy. Me Get too. Jimmy out of here. Fire Jim, yeah. but it took time to change that culture. It's gonna take time, even more probably time to change the Lions culture. But look at the head coach Dan Campbell, who I was very critical of. 
Dan Campbell out here putting his heart on the line. And his coaches, man, his coaches, they have a very – Anthony Lynn with your OC. Come on, man. Deuce Staley is the running back coach. Man, we got people in position. Hey, Lions fans, be patient, man. Be patient, man. If you're a true Lions fan, don't quit now. Be patient. The yeah. time is coming, man. The time is time. coming, man. It we is got coming, the young man. Stars. We got the young stars to build around while Hawkinson, Swift, and uh, Armin Ross St. Brown, that dog-ass offensive line, and Penny Sewell. So we here in Michigan, Let's talk we talk about are- Sewell. Can we, I'm sorry. Can we talk about Sewell for a minute? Please. Because nobody about wanted it. to talk about can we, can we can we go back a few weeks when they played against the Rams? How he stood up to all world Aaron Donald. Wasn't yeah. afraid, held his own. Come yeah. on, man. Come on, man. That boy, a first rounder, they was talking bad about Sewell. You ain't got nothing to say now. Cause that boy proving himself. Come yeah. on, man. Sewell gonna be nice, man. Ain't he playing out of position? A lot of people don't know that. This is a rookie we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Come yes, on, sir. man. The Lions gonna be all right. I know that's crazy to say. We that gonna be crazy. all right. We gonna be all right. Yes, sir. You feel me, Spe- brother. <laughs> speaking of uh, young talent, though, the, the reason why I'm so ex- so optimistic about the Lions and all these other uh, organizations here in Michigan because we in the youth renaissance, man. We're in the yes, youth we renaissance. Are. We yeah. got look at what Lucas Raymond doing out there. You know the young rook. You know what I'm saying for the Red Wings, hey, Motown look, Cedar. You know what I'm saying. Howdy, Both of these ladies guys, and gentlemen, hockey town. We bringing it back. Come we on, back, man. baby. Come Stevie on, man. Watt, you doing this thing. We in First the playoffs right pick. now. We are headed to curve. We in the playoff. Look, the, the, the Red Wings is fourth in their division with a very young uh, roster. I don't think – they might only have about three players that's over the age of 25 right now. Mm, yeah. Our yeah. first our first, our first, first round pick, Lucas Raymond, mm. just hit a game winner 10 days ago, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, against the Sabres in overtime. Didn't take long at all. First, he got the puck. Well, we in there. Come hey, on, man. Just this These past Saturday, a part of this great weekend, Motown hit an overtime goal to win the game. Come man, on, look, man. Both of them boys is in the hunt for a uh, rookie of the year. If the, if the yes, season ended right now, I think uh, Raymond got 22 points, 17 for Cedar. Uh, man, them boys going in, man. 10 goals uh, for um, Lucas Raymond. The young boys. The youth movement is spearheading the city of Detroit, and That's I think it's, I think it's rubbing off on all these different organizations. I see and you heard it here on. first on first of the party. Nobody else is talking about an entire collective of Detroit sports and it being a youth movement, ladies and gentlemen. Remember when you heard it here first, first, first of the party. party. We told y'all to the party. years in advance. We we ahead. We years in advance. We telling y'all this is a youth renaissance here in Detroit, and we excited about it. We excited yeah, you get, about you get, it. You get you see what they're doing here with the Red Wings and they and their excitement. That makes me feel so much more excited for them Tigers because we got some boys coming. We got Spe- Spinny T coming. Javi Baez. Javi Baez. <laughs> Javi. Hey, Javi got attitude and swag. No problem. But look at the young dogs coming in, bro. We got uh, Spencer Torkelson. You know what I'm saying? Big fella. I call him Big Strong Boy Spinny T. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he hitting them up out of there. Hey, Riley Green. Riley, you know, since so both hold of them on boys, now, hold go- on now, Akil, we can't forget about my dog Badu. Hey, Come on, Badu. Man. Come hey, on, man. We got some bats over here. Badu yeah. came alive, boy. Hey, he got man. some. Hey, my man, they got him in a. Uh, what was that the that Rule Five draft or something like that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He only plays single leg baseball. So last year, you know, what I'm saying a lot of people saying is it a flash in the pan or was it luck? I'm excited for my dog. My dog yeah. came up there. He came up there to the plate like a thug. Yeah. First swing. Yeah. I'm hey, I'm, I'm cracking it. Homers. He can game I'm, winners. I'm, I'm excited. Walk-offs. I'm excited. And, and let's talk about the additions that we had this summer, too, man. This is the one of the first times I can remember that the Tigers are actually spending money, man. Yeah. They spending money. You bring That's in Javi Baez, man, 140 million for seven years. Then you go get the left-handed uh pitcher from Boston Red Sox. Rodriguez. You know what I'm saying? Uh at Rodriguez. Yeah. Okay. You give him five years, 77 million. We building something in Detroit, man. We are yeah, building we something, man. From the football team in college, man, to the Tigers, man. Look, it is a great time to be a Michigan native right now, man. Hey, I'm True excited. Fans. We know we're in that lockout for baseball right now, but I expect that lockout to come up probably, I don't know, maybe probably in a month or so. But after that, you know, that's when the spending get going again. Maybe, you know, just get a Tiger some time. You know what I'm saying? To think about some other moves, maybe some more pitching. Maybe we got back. pedigree too, man. Shout out to the legendary Roger Clemens, the pitcher. We got his son Cody Clemens on the team as well. I'm hoping that Let's he's go. paying out for the Tigers as well too, man. So, hey, hey. man, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm, hey, I'm excited. excited. This, at episode eight, man, we turning up on y'all boys. Man. Hey, Come hey, on. and you, and you seen on. last, hey, and as you seen as of late, K Cunningham. 
Okay, Connie Ham is coming alive, people. Coming along. Come 28 last fact, night, 12 rebounds. Coming alive. He coming alive. He's starting to look like a uh, the number one overall pick, that generational talent that they said he was. Who he you dropped the other week? He dropped somebody about two weeks ago off the step back between the yeah. legs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He was <laughs> doing some of this. Yeah. <laughs> He's starting to get stronger. You see him bodying him at the uh, at the basket, finishing at the basket. That. Another shout that. out too. My man Killian Hayes been balling. Forty five games into the league, you got to understand this is his forty six. He only played forty five games in his career, and he's slowly getting better every game. That backcourt looking really good together, but we do have an issue in Detroit, and it may be time for us to move Sadiq Bay to the bench, at least to the bench. I'm not going to say trade him yet, but. I've had this debate with you. I've had this debate with our inner circle, and we are split. There are some of us that don't believe in Sadiq Bey, and there are some of us that do. I fall on the ladder. I don't believe in Sadiq Bey as a starter right now. I don't think that he he, – because he's young and he's going to develop. But Mm -hmm. what you need right now as a starter is to be able to not only knock down an open shot, but to be able to create. Sadiq Bey create game is horrible. He has no off the bounce. Yes, he plays good defense. Yes, if he gets hot, he can shoot, but that's the key. If he gets hot, streaky shooter. We need somebody that can create offense. And, yeah, shout out to my dog, Killian Hayes, because I was on that pick. When they picked him, I said, this is a good pick. People called me crazy. A lot of people called me last year, giving me a hard time. Now look at him. He's blossoming. And shout out to that catch and shoot game. That's development. That's coaching. Yes. I'm catching yes. He's catching fire with confidence. Yep. But back to Sadiq, though. Sadiq need to run that offense on the second on the, and, and I think that'd be more productive for him as well. How you feel about it? I think um if I was the Pistons, I would move Hami to the start lineup. Now I know that he shooting is an issue for him, but right now Sadiq's not hitting anything from three anyway. So it'll be a wash with him coming in right now. But defensively, he's more athletic. He's more live. He's more energetic. Um, the Pistons will play faster. You give another athletic guy a uh, slash when you got uh, when Cade and Killian got the ball. That means Jeremy Grant and Hamadou uh, could be slashing, cutting. Uh, they'll be playing faster off the rebound. They get out more in transition. As you've seen uh, Killian and Cade and getting in uh, transition, that gives them another option on the wing when they get out there with Jeremy and Hamadou. So um, I think a second unit of Frank Jackson, who's a good shooter, and Sadiq, who showed us last year he's a good shooter, will be right. good. Uh, with Josh Jackson as well. Um, and um, when Ke- when KO get back, that's another shooter. Can't wait. Yeah, Can't so wait. He- Big part of our offense, and people don't realize that, man. Kelly Olenek, man, he fits Detroit, you know, and the fact that he can stre- be that stretch five, a true stretch five, because he can go down low as well, but he can shoot at a good clip. Man, that's huge, man. And I want to talk about people, too. When I say let's not move on from Sadiq Bay, but, yes, move him to the bench because he's only in his second year. And we all know about the sophomore slump. It is a yeah. real thing, and it happens across all sports. He hitting a slump right now. He hitting a slump right now. Don't lose faith in him. Keep cheering him on. Give him some time. You know, you gotta remember too. Time. You got to remember, too, um, K. Cunningham missed some time in training camp, missed uh, the beginning portion of the season. Um, Killian Hayes missed time last year, missed the beginning portion of the season last year. Um, Sadiq Bey didn't play with those guys a lot last year. So this is a learning adjustment, too. He's learning how to affect the game uh, without the ball as much because uh, Kay's going to have the ball a lot. Killing's getting the ball a lot. And then Jeremy Grant is playing a lot, too. Last year, they were sitting a lot of the starters, too, you know what I'm saying, on the, on, the, on the road to tanking. So it's a bit of an adjustment process, and maybe the bench would be a good option for him. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he can come off that bench and give us a, a scoring punch. And he can still play starter minutes. It's not a demotion. We're in a, we in a different era of basketball, man. We got bench yeah. players that can affect the game and play like starters. So um, I don't think it's a bad idea to move him to the bench. I don't think it's a bad idea to uh, get uh, to showcase him on the bench, too. So Exactly. Um, and that's how I feel. Don't take it as a negative, Sadiq Bey, if you're watching this by any chance, because it's possible. OK, don't take it as a negative. Go to the bench and ball out. Be you, score, be the person to, why we drafted you to even bring you here. Mm-hmm. But you have to, he has to work on that game when it comes to being able to be off the bounce because that just, that's not going to do anything but make you a more dangerous player. By you being able to break your defender down off the bounce, you getting into the lane, now you either scoring, getting fouled, or you kicking to the open teammate. Those are all three great outcomes. 
that's what we need from you. And I even told you way back in summer league, I said, hey, Sadiq is not good off the bounce. I've been hammering the table saying that you got to work on that. He got to yeah. get more confident in that left-hand game. And honestly, he just doesn't have the moves. So I don't know if he needs to work on speed, agility, handles, probably a combination of the three. I believe in Sadiq Bay, but he needs to go to the bench right now for the betterment of the team. You know, and I that's think, what I, I feel believe. Like, I feel like he needs to believe in himself too. Because I've exactly. seen a lot in the last few games to where he's 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 a it's here mentally that he's been missing these shots. So he'd be wide open on the catch and he's hesitant. Bro, right. you gotta let that you gotta let it let it fly. Let it got go. To. You know what I'm saying? Gotta you got the green go. light, let it go. Cause you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. So I think it's I think it's mental with him. I think um the slump is getting to him. And I think if you're on the second on the on the second unit, a couple easy baskets, um, I get him going. You know what I'm saying? Another thing about the Pistons too, man. The reason why I'm always harping on bringing in more offense is because honestly, if you look at Detroit basketball, we play defense. This is nothing new here. Yeah. We're gonna sit down. Dwayne Casey is gonna make sure that this team, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna spread them wide. We in the passing lanes. They are fundamentally sound on defense with with Stu being a leader on that defensive end, being that Stu. back end. That's what I'm saying. So we need more of an offensive punch, whether it be off the bench or whether it be somebody that can crack that starting rotation. Detroit needs more firepower, especially in today's game. But like I said, I think that if we in a win-win situation right now, you know, the Pistons can do nothing but either get better or, once again, we'll be in the draft looking for a top talent to add to this collection. We're going to be okay, though. The youth now, you seen a report is here. earlier. You seen a report earlier about Indiana um, possibly – or well, they saying they could trade uh, Karis Levert, Sabonis, or Moss, and they're trying to rebuild. Um, now, would it be a bad idea for us to target one of those guys before Sadiq's value plummets? Say, for instance, um, Sabonis got a contract, and they're really looking forward to letting them go, uh, getting off that money. They're trying to rebuild. Um, he's a slower player. Yeah. Um, I don't know how well he'll play down low with with um, Isaiah Stewart, I but in the playoffs, made really in good. heaven, huh? I think it'll be a match made in heaven as far as him and Stu, because mm -hmm. Stu is more of that. He's Stu was really more of an old school paint dominant on offense, you know, and more on defense too as well. I prefer him to be closer to the rim. Not saying that he can't step out there and guard on the perimeter because he's very young and athletic. But on the offensive side of the ball, Sabonis can stretch the floor. Sabonis is a three-level scorer from three mm -hmm. all the way in. I think it'll be. I think it might. I think it might work. The problem is, yes, he is a slower player, and we've been seeing recent success with a faster pace. So mm -hmm. I, that's the part. But as far as him being paired with Stu, I love it. I love it. I think. I think a deal like future first, Sadiq Bay. I think it may be able with with the with the cash coming off and them getting the first round pick. I think a start lined up with Killian, K, Jeremy Grant, Sabonis, and Isaiah Stewart could possibly get the Pistons to a playoff. And I say that because um, of the size. There's a lot of size on the floor, even in the backcourt with K six seven, and then you got Killian six five, Jeremy Grant six nine. Now it's switchability. So all bonus about six ten, if I'm not mistaken. I could six ten, six eleven. So he around there though. Yeah. So whenever you play a bigger team like the Milwaukee Bucks, you can throw Sabonis at center and then play Stewart at the four. You know what I'm saying? So it does give you that. Also, what it helps with is um, when when Stewart gets in foul trouble. Now you can play Sabonis at the five and then move Grant to the four and you can oh. play smaller. You know what I'm saying? So it gives you depth and it gives Stewart the ability and the and opportunity to play aggressive. So oh, I, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that at all. We all know in the playoffs, the game slow down too. So you're going to need Referees, man, get off Stu, man. That's another thing too. I hate to be the one to say it because I hate to use the referees as any type of excuse for a win or a loss, but let's be real about it. The way they referee in Stu is very unfair because he looked like a football player. You know, listen, man, a lot of that bullshit that they be, these people be getting around Stu fly throwing their arm. Hey, man, cut that shit out, man. Yeah. Referees, man, the zebras that's watching this, man, stop that shit, man. Man, stop. for real, man. Let, be we real, man. To... <laughs> Come on, man. We know, we know how y'all feel about LeBron. We know. Yeah, man. <laughs> we... <laughs> you shouldn't have did that shit. Man, that's you should have did. did. You should have did that shit. <laughs> 
man, we got to talk about this weekend, man, because also a part of this great weekend, it wasn't just Michigan sports. It wasn't just Detroit sports, man. We got to talk about boxing. We had Youth Devin movement. Haney, okay? Youth movement. And then we had Tank, man. And then we had Tank Davis that fought. They fought a day apart. Also in the same division, that lightweight division, which is on fire right now. That motherfucking division is on fire. It's the best Can division of boxing. Can both be Ooh, I didn't man. see that coming. <laughs> I watched what we know from what we've seen. Uh, the reporter from ESPN they said Teofimo uh could have died or whatever. I don't know how much that affected him fighting, right? But it could have, you know what I'm saying? It I don't could, know, yeah, it could have. So, it I'm uh, I'm kind of on the fence with that. Uh, I'm gonna say congratulations to Cambo the Cambosis. He right. fought a good fight. Uh, he won that fight. He man. won the fight. I'm not, I'm not about to take that away from him, man. He, he won, won that fight. He, he won, won the fight. fight. And I think he's here in his division too. Uh, I had to go back and watch uh, the other two fights uh, again last night, uh, yesterday. And yeah. I thought both of them did a good job. I was pleased by both performances. Uh, uh, I really love what I, I was more impressed by Tank because of the hand, hand mm-hmm. being hurt. And mm-hmm. also Tank was boxing. Come we on, hear man. a lot about. You, did you read my notes? You had to read my notes before we got on here. That's crazy. No, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, but no, seriously though, you're right though, man. I was at first when I first watched the fight. Let me be real. I was not impressed by either one. Mm. But take your. I had to come back, exhale, take my time. You know, put my headphones and let's watch it. The fight. You know, yeah. take my time. Impressed by both, LA. Man, yeah. and I feel exactly the way you feel. I I was uh, a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit more impressed by Tank. And I do think Tank is the more complete boxer. We'll get into that in a minute. But I do think Tank, I was very impressed with him, bro, because of the angles. Mm-hmm. He was seriously boxing. You know and what turning. I'm saying? Countering, turning, spinning him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then he also, uh, and, and respect to Isaac Cruz, because he had a great game plan. He had a very, he had to me, he had the best game plan fighting against Tank. He fought a damn good had. fight. He here, too. He did. He, he, yeah, here. he here, too. He a problem, too, in that division. Yeah. But I feel like... Uh, Man, Tank box. The only thing I want more from Tank now, man, give me some more jab, man. Because the j- everybody knows, and I'm gonna I'm say it. I'm gonna say it every podcast until it happens, bro. The jab opens up everything else. So many other talents that you have. Stick that jab out there more, like Haney did. Haney let that jab fly. He's sticking that jab all in your face. He <laughs> might have the best jab out of all them young he boys, might, man. Uh, Oh, in the lightweight division, yeah. yeah. I think the best jab in boxing right now might be uh, Shakur Steven. But hey, that's just me. Hey, I, I look at, I look at. Um, he might have the best jab in the boxing game right now. The 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 thing about Tank and the jab, Tank not used to being a taller fighter. This is the yeah. first time Tank was the taller fighter. So mm-hmm. the jab has not been a, a a weapon that he uses a lot. He's For more sure. focused on trying to get on the inside and fight like Canelo. Him and Canelo sure. has a similar fighting style. Yeah. But um, the jab, like Devin Haney, man, like that was a that was a good fighter. Like JoJo Diaz only got one L, and that's to Gary Russell Jr. That's a and that's a whole a different class fighter over there. That's a whole different weight class that he lost that. So he's never that was his first time losing that like too. Yeah, you know? Devin Haney, uh, um, comp- I think the most athletic guy given fighter in that division. Um, uh, uh, he's just athletic, so quick, agile. Uh, um, the power still Not waiting that. to see that, but I didn't expect him to knock out Jojo. I didn't expect him to drop right. Jojo. Right. So I'm ex- I want to see the next fight and see who we fight next and see if he can drop him. Um, but um, I'm as impressed by both of these guys, man. Where do you think they go I, next? I'm glad that you asked me that because that's literally what I was just thinking. I'm thinking uh, for Haney, I'm thinking Haney can go. I think because Haney been in lightweight a little longer than Tank. This is only Tank's second fight in lightweight, which was even more impressive to me, too, mm-hmm. taking on Isaac Cruz, only on your, only your second fight in that division. I think Haney need to go straight for Cambo, so make a beeline. Let's see yeah. what's up. Yeah. Go ahead and make that. And I think for Tank, I, and me personally, I think Tank can really have his pick of the litter. I think he can either go Ryan Garcia, I think he can go Haney, or I think he can go Cambo. So these are the fights that I would like to see next in that division. Um, yeah. That's what I think. I, me personally, I don't – because a lot of people was connecting Devin to uh, Ryan. Devin to Ryan. Devin has proven to me that he's better than Ryan already, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, do I want to see that fight? Yes, but I would much rather see this hungry Combosa versus this hungry guy, Devin. Let's see who the best guy is right now, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think, think uh, Tank 
I like yeah. I like I like the matchups. I think Ryan and um Ryan and Tank is for sure probably next. Uh they've been talking about each other a lot. A lot. Uh, Floyd been talking about him a lot. De La Hoya been talking about Tank. Uh I could see uh Tank, um Ryan Garcia, pay-per-view, crazy, crazy, crazy numbers. Um and once Tank go through him, you know what I'm saying? Then it's okay. This guy might be the 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 cash. He coming up and be the cash cow. Uh-huh. Um, I think Devin Haney. I think Devin yeah. Haney goes through Cambosis, and I think the best matchup to make in that division is Haney Tank or Haney Tank, and then the mm-hmm. winner of them gets Shakur Stevenson. Mm. This is so. This is, let me throw. Let me throw some. Let me throw some scenarios out here. All right. So we still have to account for Lomachenko, Tiafimo, because we mm-hmm. don't know if Tiafimo is going to leave and move up. He talked. He used the whole draining, and he was. You know, it took him. A, it took a lot out of him to get down to that weight. But that's where the money is right now. Look how many different weapons. Look how many different fighters. That, that's that's what. That's where it's at right now, in yeah. my opinion. That that lightweight is. It is uh it, it is relentless. It could it could get relentless. You know, it reminds me of how the welterweight used to be a few years back. That was mm-hmm. a that was a, a a crazy crazy time. Um, but do you think that Tank is the best fighter at lightweight right now? Who do you think the best fighter is at lightweight? I think uh, Shakur Stevenson is the best out of. Oh, it's probably between Tank and Shakur. Wait, you know, so Shakur so. I, I thought Shakur was didn't move up to lightweight yet. He did. He he he's one thirty five. Yeah, okay. And one thirty five, one forty. You know they they all fight between one forty, one thirty five. Uh, Tank oh, yeah. moving up between one. He ain't got it in one thirty, one thirty five, one forty. Uh, so I mean, and you so you think is, Shakur is you think Shakur Shakur is the best? Uh, He's the best in that division, just overall best. I think skill set, yeah, but I, he's stuck uh-huh. under Bob Arum, so we gotta we gotta see how long he get from up under Bob Arum. So we don't know when he gonna fight these guys. Uh, uh, he's Crawford been going Jr. overseas. He's been going overseas. He's got a um a, a fight against um let's think uh, Oscar Oscar Vasquez or something like that. Mm-hmm. He won the title uh uh in top in top rank too, so he got a title over there too. So uh. That'll be a good one. Um, I think right now my top two in that division would be, as as you said, I had Shakur edging out uh, Tank. I think that Shakur is the com- – I think he is more of a complete boxer. Yeah. I think Tank is the best fighter. And the reason yeah. why I think Tank is the best fighter is because Tank is more of a complete fighter than any of the other guys outside of Shakur. You yeah. look at Devin, amazing boxer, no power. Tank can fight however you would like to fight. And that's what makes him special to me. That's what makes – if you want to have a boxing match, Tank say, hey, I've been working with Floyd. I can move around, okay? If you want to slug it out, hey, I got power in both of my hands, especially dynamite in the left. And that's what makes Tank's very intriguing. It make you, it draws you to him. It's like, damn, what else can he do? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when I watch Shakur, I'm like, damn, that's boxing. <laughs> that's boxing <laughs> like come on man you know the truth like we just sat there like oh shit that's boxing man that's like, boxing it is he nothing is hitting he can't and do. not getting hit bro <laughs> like it's nothing he can't do uh i think he um i think he, he, got the best more pop. he has more pop on his shots than ryan does and devin see devin to me has the least of the power out of all these guys including ryan garcia Devin needs to do something to get some more that he needs that because when you get that pop, not only like damn he a good boxer but shit that hurt me. Jojo Diaz, he's uh, jo- Jojo Diaz told Ryan well he said in that press conference I'm willing to take two of Ryan's shots just to get off one of mine. He ain't gonna say that against no tank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. he ain't gonna say that. You're not so gonna take too many just, of them. I think maybe I think what Haney need to do. He might need to adapt, uh, adopt that uh, pot shot. Mm-hmm. Floyd wouldn't throw as many punches, mm-hmm. but the ones he would hit you with, he would you would feel it, and you're not gonna take yeah. too many of them. So they got it messed up with Floyd. So he ain't got no power. You ain't gonna take too many of Floyd punches. 
because right. you're not hitting him, you're getting frustrated, and he hitting you with just one, get up out of there. You, damn. Yeah. Six, seven, eighth round, Ricky Hatton, you out of there. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and if he ain't have power, if his hands are soft, although it was some bullshit with Ortiz, Ortiz would have got up. You know exactly. what I'm saying? At the floor. Exactly. That, uh, you know, exactly. at the floor hitting, Ortiz would have got up. But he was I also want to go, also, I also like to do a little bit deeper dive into the tank fight as well. Um, I looked at the stats too. Not only did I just kind of watch the fight, you know, a couple of times, but I, I looked at the stats too. This is the first time that Tank actually was outworked as far as volume wise. Cruz put out more shots than than Tank mm-hmm. did, you know, but Tank landed about two percent more. He landed like twenty nine percent of his shots total, though, like total. You know what I'm saying? So I was I, I, I was thoroughly impressed with Tank because of the fact that I know Tank has that power, and it's easy to not be a boxer and rely on that. Deontay Wilder you know but Tank like no I work on my game to be the most complete fighter and I'm very excited to see this this lightweight division in the next few uh the next year you know I am I'm I'm excited man I'm very excited about it yeah man that's go that's gonna do it for us with the episode this week man the nice uh uh youth movement I mean this week we gotta we gotta look forward to the Pistons got what three games left this week Mm -hmm. uh Maybe we have some more material. We'll see how Sadiq played the rest of this week. You know, the Lions got another game this week. Red you Wings play tonight. They're going for six straight. They got the Let Predators tonight. And Let then we'll keep it. y'all posted with some uh some Tiger news. But look, yeah, and we're gonna y'all keep y'all posted on the tuned, Michigan man. too, man. We're gonna keep Michigan. y'all posted on our board. Hey, and not only just the football, the basketball team too, man. We off to a slow start. Don't lose faith in Jawan, man. It's Jawan. He's gonna turn it around. We got a yeah. very young team, man. We got three. Out of the five people that could be on the floor at one time, man, we got three five-star freshmen all playing right now. It's going to be ugly. They got to learn. We got, too. We, got yeah, we got Honey Dick, too. We got Honey Dick. We got Honey Dick for sure. I call him Honey Dick. <laughs> I don't. I call him Honey <laughs> Hunter Dickerson. <laughs> hey, man, first of the party, man, we back every Tuesday. We're going to be here, man, dropping something for y'all, boy. We're going to be bringing and, like, the heat, man, bringing the heat, Lord. man. Hey. Before we get up out of here, man, y'all be good out here. Be safe. Another yeah, man. thing, man, y'all got to wash y'all feet, bro. Don't forget, yeah. man. Wash your feet, man. Please, man. Hashtag wash your feet in the comments, bro. <laughs> and another Run thing I got to do man. is this, man. We got to remember this. Grab that brick over there so we can break this chain. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. Let's get it. Ah. Big stats. Big stats. Big stats. Big stats. Big stats.